Here we are back at the summary grid. I want to show you some of the features that are a little bit different for the case tripping sub-op. Remember we have case tripping and case cementing for the casing operation. And let's just look at a string of 9 and 5 eighths for our, our subject well. And if we double click on the trip sub-op, it'll pull up our plot. And, and for the time being, I'm going to bring this down to a two-plot view. And we're just going to look at hook load and torque. Now, uh, on this particular example, I've got a string of 9 and 5 eighths that may not slide to bottom for higher friction factors. For these two higher friction factor lines, the surface hook load, when we get deeper, is going to be lower than my block weight, which means I'm in a push condition or a negative weight condition, which might not be feasible. Certainly for the highest friction factor, I'm going to be even below my block weight, which certainly would not be feasible. So uh, one of the features that we can deploy is casing flotation. And uh, first I'm going to lock the axis here so we can see what's going on. But if you come on down to fluid profile, what that enables you to do is define the density of fluid on the inside of the pipe and the outside of the pipe. And if we just click this box in the upper left-hand corner, enable fluid profile, the default assumption is that I have mud on the outside and I have air on the inside. We've got two different boxes here. We've got fluid in the pipe, fluid in the annulus. By default, we're going to assume that it's mud that's in the annulus, and it starts at surface, and it has a length of 16,500 feet. It's going all the way to the bottom of the hole. It has a density of 10 pounds per gallon. Now, you notice there's a check mark in this box called Scenario Mud. And what that check mark do box does is it links the density of the fluid in the annulus right here uh, to whatever I have defined in the scenario. You notice that I have a mud weight of 10 pound per gallon defined in the scenario. If I was to change this box to 11 pound per gallon, it would automatically update and change the density of the mud here. That way, if I was doing a mud weight sensitivity, this box would automatically update it and change. If for whatever reason, if I don't want to link those two, I can simply check this box and now uh, the density here is completely unrelated to whatever I have specified in the scenario. So, uh, scenario mud. At the top, what we've assumed here is that the fluid is air, completely evacuated, uh, nothing on the inside. I'm just going to move this box over so we can see what the impact was. You'll notice on my hook load plot that the tension or hook load is considerably lower than what it was when I was running a mud filled string of pipe. And I can turn this on and off just to see what the effect is. That's if I'm mud filled, this is if I'm empty. Now, to model mud over air or selective flotation, uh, what I'm going to need to do is add a section of pipe, uh, a section of fluid inside the pipe. And you could choose a fluid from your library. So maybe synthetic based mud and 12 and a quarter hole, that would be a pretty good starting point. And we'll click OK. And what the program does by default is it splits the string in half and says half the string's air, half the string's mud. Uh, the other thing that uh, would be reasonable to assume is that this is actually linked to the scenario mud. So if I come on over here and click scenario mud, it's going to tie the properties together, the same mud weight and, and rheology that I have specified in my scenario down here. If I wanted to change the, the depth at which I switch over from air to mud, I could uh, just edit this box here. Let's say I'm going to run a 10,000 foot air column, type in 10. 1000, hit enter, and the length of the mud chamber will automatically be recalculated for me. Now, one thing that's important to point out is that this air chamber is actually sealed at the top when we do a selective flotation operation. So I need to check this seal box because that will uh, eventually end up impacting my casing collapse calculations, which we'll show you a little bit later on. So that uh, chamber is sealed at the top, and uh, therefore we need to check that box. So, selective flotation, that's how we do it in ERA. Uh, if uh, we were to move down to the snapshot calculations, and we unlock the axis, you can see there's a snapshot of the tension uh, both running in and pulling out for this selective flotation string. And I'm going to scroll on over until I get to casing collapse right here. All right, so the casing collapse load, um, if I were doing this, I would do a running speed sensitivity, not a friction factor sensitivity. 
uh, because right now it's just showing a single running speed. But if I click on running speed, a set of curves will appear where I've got 100 foot per minute running speed and then sensitivity at 40 feet per minute. There are several different curves we're pointing out. The gold curve is the static condition. The, the gold curve is when I'm not moving the pipe. It's just hydrostatic collapse load. The color curves are the dynamic collapse load. So this is factoring in that surge effect that we get when we're lowering the pipe in the hole. The dotted line that you notice at the very top, that uh, is the calculation for fully evacuated pipe. And that's what we assume we have after we get the pipe to bottom and we convert the selective flotation collar. The moment that that collar is sheared and the mud starts falling down into the air chamber on the lower part of the string, we don't actually have a hydrostatic column inside the pipe. So we want to look at what the load is on the string at that very moment in time. That's why it's a dotted line. It's just a momentary load case, but we need to check it nonetheless. The dynamic condition as we're running in the hole are these colored curves um, surge effect. Now, if I double-click on this plot and we change the axis here a little bit, change this up maybe to 5,500 psi, you'll notice that the hydrostatic, uh, sorry, the uh, collapse rating of the pipe is shown in black, and then a slightly lighter color is the is the gray. That is the D-rated value based on uh, whatever design factor I have specified in my settings. I'm going to move this over to the side pull up our settings screen, you can see that for collapse we've assumed a 1.2 design factor. If I was using a 1.1 design factor, notice how the gray shaded area moves to the right, a little bit less conservative. By default we use 1.2. There we go. Now you also notice that this curve has some squiggly lines, and that's because we do derate the collapse rating for tension. Uh, the collapse rating of the pipe is lower as we apply tension to the string. So, uh, if I was to apply an overpull load case, let's just say that I put, uh, I don't know, 300,000 pounds of overpull on the string, hit enter, we'll recalculate the curves. What happened? I do not know. Oh, far too much. Program freaked out. Not 3,000, 300. There. 300,000 pounds of overpull at the bit. You notice that the uh, collapse rating is now very close to the load. No overpull, we're just fine. So those are some of the unique features that you can play around with in the case trip sub-op.